I remember a couple instances in particular where people disagreed with the decision we were making and I exploded on them. You can't disagree, this is a serious you problem. You can't do this. I'm the CEO of the company. That's what I did and I deeply regret it. I mean, I definitely, I hurt some people for sure. I'm on the road a lot. It feels very isolated, very lonely. I'm seeking any platform that I can find to generate leads for my business. You know, working remotely is challenging. To me, it comes down to communication and being connected with the rest of the team. I, I have a story about you with some judgment on this one, but Go I'll, for I'll it. save it for another time. No, no, but... let's hear it now. I want to hear it now. You, I was like, yeah, I'm super pumped about this. Like, company's great. I just made a hundred thousand dollar deal. Like, I'm finding my groove. And you were like, well, you didn't actually do it, right? And I remember looking at you, and I was like, you are an asshole. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I remember that as well. And it doesn't surprise me, especially with my first company. The first twelve or thirteen employees that we hired were all men, and at the time, they looked all like me. And we said, look, we need to we need to hire a woman. So when we hired Kaylee, it was great because she fit in perfectly. Our relationship, I thought, was fairly strong. In, in retrospect, I realized that she was working in fear of me. It was a command and control type of environment. And I was so hell-bent on my vision that anyone that wasn't following me into battle was a traitor. And I thought everything was, was perfect, but my management style is what took down that company. I'm very, very privileged to have um, um, such incredible friends and family. Um, when I transitioned, Kaylee was one of the first people I came out to. I remember being super scared to tell her, but at the same time, I felt like I could trust her. And now we've got an incredible friendship that is deep. She's now my chief of staff at, at Translator. Before I transitioned, I had spent all of my life in this sort of bubble of white male privilege. Um, I had never been turned away for just being who I was. And what I pretty quickly realized that was that this wasn't just a trans issue. People are, are more than labels. So basically we created this app that was designed to help people become a better version of themselves through storytelling. And we'd love to talk to you about how we could help your organization facilitate courageous conversations in the workplace. So thank you all for this opportunity. Um, people expect me to be on, right? And I have to be on because this is why I came. Like I came to be networking. One of the potential investors called me and I haven't talked to them in a, quite some time and I'm, we're on the fence and like, are they gonna invest or not? And right now I just don't feel like we have that. It's hard to roll with it sometimes, you know? Like I still have that muscle memory of aggression and distrust and micromanaging and everybody, everything's gotta be perfect. And then I, I don't let that happen, but, but I, I remember it. This whole approach is, is really people first. You know, it's about making sure that everyone's on board. It's about making sure that everyone's engaged. It's about being human and checking in with each other. At my first company, we didn't have time for feelings. And now that's really what's going to ensure our success. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. I've got some news. So we got funded. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, so yeah, it's happening. It's happening. It's all happening. Where we are today and where we're gonna be is gonna change. But I think the core of it is, is trust and it's that open culture that really attracts people to the organization. Open is how we roll and open culture is what helps us thrive.